And the wicked, ungodly world is treating the church like we are the problem. I want you to know the church is not the problem. The church is the solution. Somebody say amen. amen. But Jesus said the church is not the problem as well. The church is the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its savor, then you have a problem. What does salt do? It preserves the meat. We are the salt trying to preserve the lost from an eternity in hell without Jesus Christ. And the church is preaching the gospel. The church is laying on of hands. The church is casting out devils. And the church is what keeps this world from rotting. Somebody say amen. amen. Who says the church doesn't matter? You know, COVID was extremely difficult for our young people and for the people who in our, in our world, all over the world. The virus was one problem, but it gave rise to another problem. And how many of you know you're not meant to be welded inside of your home? Not touching people, not having relationships with others. It's not good, the Bible says, for man to be alone. You hear people say things that are just totally off the wall, totally untrue, totally ungodly and unscriptural. If we're watching from home, Pastor, on the internet, it's the same presence of God. Now, who are you trying to kid? Not uh, even Jesus, who is the expert, taught that there is a greater blessing when you come in the house of the Lord. And when two or three are gathered together in my name, things are going to happen. The church is critical. The church is absolutely vital to this world that we're living in. You see the riots breaking out. You see churches shutting down. You see people shooting others in the head for no reason at all. You see a, a border crossing that is wide open with an alarming rate of 400,000 is expected to come into our borders and up to 800,000 in October alone. We've got issues, we've got problems in America, and it's time for the church to stand up and for the church to be the church. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to understand what we've seen over the last two years is just a very small glimpse and a very small sample and a small picture of what's going to happen during the tribulation. If the church is not open. And if the church is not preaching the gospel, if the church is not teaching the word and laying on of hands and casting out devils, then there is no restrainer keeping the devil from annihilating humanity. The godless unbeliever and the wicked and the corrupt and the depraved and the immoral could care less if the church is open. But I want you to know, I'm thrilled the church is open in this place. I'm here to tell you our job is to preach the gospel, lay on our hands and cast out devils. That's what the church was intended to do. The devil doesn't have a plan for a church that stays open. The devil doesn't have a church that's on the move, a plan for the church that's on the move. The devil doesn't have a plan for the church that's on fire and empowered by the Holy Ghost. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of Gerasenes, and Jesus climbed out of the boat. And a man possessed by evil spirits came out from the tombs to meet him. I, was, I preached this before not long ago. And you're saying, oh, pastor, we're going to have a rerun. No, 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 pastor doesn't do reruns. <clears throat> I said, pastor doesn't do reruns. But I'm going to give you some fresh stuff today, fresh things. And I was thinking about Jesus crossing over in that boat and stepping off for the very first time on that land and putting his foot out there, and all of a sudden he's met with a demon, just like that. I want you to understand there is supremacy of the power of God over the supremacy of the power of the devil. There is nothing God cannot do. He will have victory over the enemy, victory over the devil every time, I guarantee it. When Jesus stepped onto the shoreline, there was a shockwave. There were tremors and there was a quake of anointing that must have jolted the whole region. And that man went to Jesus and ran to him and he began to worship him. I want you to understand the importance of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
Do you remember at the beginning of COVID, they said by May the 8th, 2020, they said every hospital will be full. What do you do when there is evil like that? In the flesh, you would probably want to run and hide. It would have been easy for Jesus to head the opposite direction to avoid and dodge and sidestep the boogeyman that was coming after him. It would have been real easy for Jesus to go and duck the crazy, insane fellow in the cave and park way down the road from him. You'd be surprised how many people in the church wanted to duck, wanted to dodge, wanted to avoid, wanted to sidestep the boogeyman, the devil himself. You'd be surprised how many people wanted to weld themselves in their homes during COVID. People came to understand that welding yourself in the home, it doesn't work because the number one place people got COVID was where? It was in the home. More times than not. You cannot outrun evil. We live in a wicked world that is full of evil. And God's answer is not for us to build a commune and hide His answer is for you to get filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. That's His answer. So you can be set on fire and so you can do something about your situation that you're in at that present time. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible said, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. Jesus did not start out one day and say, I'm just going to teach and preach. As a matter of fact, the Bible said over in Luke chapter 4 verses 1 and 2, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, Returned from the Jordan River, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights and Jesus ate nothing. Before he began his earthly ministry, he went out into the wilderness. He was led there by the Holy Spirit and when he came back, he was totally engulfed, empowered and filled by the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4 verses 14 and 15, the Bible said that Jesus returned to Galilee quickly and he filled the Holy Spirit's, he was filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about Jesus spread quickly through the whole region. Does anybody hear a report about you being filled with the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you, if it is with Jesus, it needs to be so with you. People need to hear that you are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Then God can move. Then God can do something. The Bible said that the news began to quickly spread around the whole region. He taught regularly in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. There is something called the power of the Holy Spirit. And so many times churches doesn't recognize this thing. And I want you to understand if you don't have him... If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you're not incorporating the Holy Spirit in your life in everyday situations, you're missing a a key component of Christianity, and that's what Christianity is all about. If you got a nice vehicle out there, and you've got a full tank of gas, and it's ready to go, but you have no key, you're not going to get far. The key is the Holy Spirit And that's where we are able to be empowered and we can move. And God wants the church full of the Holy Spirit. God wants you, the church, to be full of the Holy Spirit. You've got to make Him a priority in your life. When you think about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, don't think about denim skirts, no makeup, no earrings, and hair in a bun. Don't think about that. That's not what we're talking about. When we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it has nothing to do with apparel. It's something about possessing spiritual power that is God-given. It's given to those who are born again. It's given to those who are saved. It's given to those who know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. The Bible says, Greater is He that is in you. Now I want you to know, it's one thing to be saved, but it's a whole different world to have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. It brings a whole new dimension to your Christian walk with Jesus Christ. When you think about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, do you have it? 
I know you need it, but do you have it? Do you have that greater one who is the Holy Spirit living inside of you? There are so many critical people nowadays, they find fault with everything and everyone. They criticize and say, well, the job of a shepherd is to keep people safe. We don't need to open churches. We need to be careful of COVID. We need to be uh, keeping people safe. Well, if that's the case, Jesus would have never went to the other side of the sea where the man lived in the caves. He would have never went and he had never put his disciples in harm's way. You see, my job is not to keep you safe from COVID. My job is to lay hands on you to see the sick healed and see the devils run. That's my job. That's your job as a believer. That's your job as somebody that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. But there are those fault-finding people everywhere, finding fault, finding fault, finding fault. My job is to see you go down into the highways and the byways of this life to win and conquer the enemy and use every ounce of the Holy Spirit that you have inside of you to change the situation in our world. That's my job. And I want you to understand as a Christian, we have someone living inside of us, someone that is greater, someone that has got an anointing. He comes inside of us and we can go through this life in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we can tread on serpents and snakes. Why? Because He lives in you and me. That's a good place to say amen. Amen. If you can get that tattooed, if you can get that tattooed on the inside of you, if you can get that carved on the inside of your heart, your life will be totally different. Because more times than not, Christians like to be consumed with other things that are against them. Christians like to be consumed with devils and demons and hell. All those devils that are coming after them that day after day after day, they're just, they're just happy and content. Even though the enemy is coming on and there's an onslaught, the devil is coming after them. But I've got good news for you. You can get this on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say it with me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You will go with an anointing on the inside of you and you will defeat the devil at every time you turn around at every corner. Does anybody want to win? Does anybody want to beat the devil? Does anybody want to beat the devil and be victorious today? Now I'm preaching about as hard as I can preach. But I tell you what, if you get after it and you help me a little bit, I'll step it up a notch. We'll go 110. We'll put that baby in high gear and go, all right? The Bible says that we need to know that the greater is He that is living in you. You go out with an anointing and you will win. But people that are spineless, people that are jellyfish Christians will say, well, you know, preacher, the economy is not very good right now. You know, pastor... uh, If this person gets elected or that person gets elected, we're going to have some problems. You know what that's going to do to our country, Pastor, if this happens or that happens? They're always talking about what the devil's going to do. Well, I've got news for you. I want to tell you what God is going to do. God is going to move. God is going to have your best days coming up, your best years coming up. We are not going to lose. We're going to be victorious. We're going to be brave. We're going to be courageous. We're going to be bold. We're going to win. Somebody say amen. Because we are the church. We are God's very elect. They're always talking about devils and demons. I got news for you. God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3. I promise you what I promised Moses, Joshua. Joshua, I promised Moses something. I want you to know, I promise you, wherever you set your feet, you will be on land that I have given you. Everywhere you go, every time you move your foot, every direction, every place you go, you are going to be in the right place and God is going to use you. It doesn't matter what's against you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Your tomorrows are going to be okay. Amen? Do you believe that? I said your tomorrows are going to be okay. Jesus steps on the ground, and he didn't tell Peter and John, 
Peter and John, watch out, there's a guy up there, and he's naked. Oh, well, be careful of that man. He's a crazy man, and he's running all over. I want you to be on guard, John. I want you to be on guard, Peter. But he, he beats people up. So be careful. Watch where you go. Be on guard. Be alert. Jesus never said any of that. He stepped on the shore, and what was inside of him overwhelmed the enemy so much with the power of the Holy Spirit, the man came and ran and fell at Jesus' feet. Folks, I'm ready for the world to come and bow at our feet because we have an anointing inside of us. We have the power of God inside of us. There's nothing that can harm us. There's nothing that can defeat us. We will win because we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit in us. It's the Holy Spirit. So when we take a step in a dangerous place, we can be sure that the Holy Spirit's going to protect us. That's the message of Christianity. That's the message of the Bible, of the Word of God. It doesn't matter who's against you. It doesn't matter who comes against you. It doesn't matter how harsh life is. It doesn't matter about how cancer is spread. It doesn't matter about blindness. It doesn't matter about heart disease, kidney disease. It doesn't matter. The, what matters is this message in this book. And this message says, Greater is He that is in you. Greater is He that is in you. Some of us forget when we become a Christian, we've got something inside of us. Greater is He that is in you. There's something coming inside of us. It's the Holy Spirit. And He wants to come in your life. He wants to erupt in your life. He wants to change your situation and your circumstances. And the Holy Spirit rises up in you. And you're no longer the same old person that the devil has kicked around for years and days. The message of the Bible is crucial. Do you see, Jesus wasn't going around praying for people that had sinus infections or allergies or belly aches. He was praying for people. There were no cures for them. No matter what the sickness, no matter what the disease, the Bible says, I said the Bible says, He healed them all. The unbeliever says, well, what about mental conditions, Pastor? What about that kidney failure? What about heart disease? What about that liver? Tell me, Pastor. You don't understand, Pastor. I'm bipolar. Okay, you're bipolar. That's all right. This guy here in the Bible was such a freak and so bad at being bipolar, he was running around naked in the countryside. He couldn't keep his clothes on. So everybody in this room, even if you think you have issues, just by the fact that you're here and not naked, it's clear that you're not as in bad shape as this man in Mark chapter 5. Somebody say amen. amen. People here may think they're crazy, but after reading the story of Matthew chapter 5 or Mark chapter 5, you seem pretty normal because you've got your clothes on. This man couldn't keep a stitch of clothes on if he wanted to. He was out running around in his birthday suit. He was the original streaker. When you read the Bible, you start to realize there's a difference in most people who call themselves Christians. Those that are so-called normal people, they make excuses. Normal Christianity, they have every excuse in the book. Normal Christians magnify their opponent. Normal Christians magnify the devil. Normal Christians focus on how big their problems are. But I've got good news for you. When you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, something comes on the inside of you and it rises up and no longer are you magnifying the devil. No longer are you focusing on how big he is. You are saying, greater is he that is in me. And he's going to live in me and I'm going to show him off to the world. But the Bible gives you a disrespect for the power of the devil. The Bible points out that the devil is not near as big and bad as we make him to be. He is not all-knowing. He is not all-powerful. He is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at one time like our God can. But the Word of God gives us a clue how powerful God is. The Word of God tells us how knowing He is. The, God, the Word of God tells us how great He is and how omnipresent He is. He's all those things. I said He's all those things. He's all those things and more. He's greater and bigger and larger than we could ever dream. I was watching my grandkids the other day. They came up to church and 
Lynn Eldon's here working on the lights, and we got a few people running around, and, and it was Wednesday afternoon at 1230. The ladies were in the war room over here, and they were going to town. I mean, they were shaking the rafters, and God was moving, and healings were happening, and miracles came to take place. And as they were praying, they got loud. They got violent against the enemy. One of my grandkids said, Granddad, I want to see a miracle. I want to see a miracle. I believe it's time for the church to see miracles. Miracles come when the Holy Spirit fills you up and fills up your life. You need to realize you serve a mighty God. The Bible is not written to, written to teach you how to keep a smile on your face or how to have a stiff upper lip when you're in hardship and when the devil is slapping you around every day. That's not what the Bible is written for. The Bible is a book that says no matter what you're going through, you can call on God in Jeremiah 33.3 and call on me and I'll answer you. That's what it's all about. When you call on Him, you're praying from here. The innermost parts of your belly, the, the gut, the heart, when you're praying. You see, when you pray, it's not just a coping mechanism. It's not like the AA prayers, the alcoholic uh, anonymous. Uh, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. If you're going to pray for courage to change the things that you can, you don't really need any help from God. Maybe you didn't hear me. Amen. To accept those things that you cannot change, that requires nothing from God. That's just religion, folks. Religion teaches you how to be satisfied with whatever thing the devil has saddled you with. Whatever the devil has weighed you down with. Religion just says, get by, cope and handle it, and you'll be okay. If you have a sickness, religion will say, well, that's your cross to bear. How many of you have heard that one? That's your cross to bear. That's not in the Word of God. Did you ever hear Jesus tell a sick person that's their cross to bear? Religion says that, not Jesus. You won't find it in this book. When people say, well, this is their cross to bear in life, it goes all over me. It just goes all over me. I just can't take that. You see, Jesus bore all my sickness. He bore all my pain. He bore all my sorrow. He bore all my heartache. And He bore it on the cross. I want you to know, I am here to help you fix your situation. I'm not there to accept anything the devil wants to burden you with. I'm here to see you get out of that area, get out of that place, get out of that situation. I want you healed, set free, and delivered. Oh, you guys are so weak today. Come on. Jesus bore it all. I'm here to use the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit that's within me to release hope to you, to release help to you, to release anointing to you, to release the hopelessness and the desperate. I'm here to help you, uh, those that are disheartened. I want to help those that are uh, dis desperate. I want to help the miserable. I want to help the downcast. I want to help the object, uh, dejected. I want to help those people that are down in the mouth. I want to set people free with this word. And folks, that's the reason I'm asking you to get out and bring people to this house. There's plenty of room. And if there's not, we'll make more room. We'll build on this place if we need to. We'll go up a second story if we have to. We will grow. We'll expand. But I need you to take your anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, and I need you to go out and use it, witness, and bring people in this house so they can be set free. That's why we're here, folks. If everything is fine and dandy and all nuts and candy, then I can't help you. You're doing all right. You don't need no help. But if you're here and you're under the attack and the onslaught of the devil, and he's coming after you, he's coming after your family, he's coming after your finances, he's coming after your friends, he's coming after your loved ones, and the devil or religion has convinced you that's how life is. And things just don't always work out, they say. I've come to preach the word to you. That's not the end of the book. 
You can be victorious. You can take the word of God and declare the works of the Lord. And you can and you will live and you will not die. The Lord says your, God will rise up and your enemies will be scattered. The word says His power, the Holy Spirit resides in you. He will give you the strength to overthrow the devil. The devil's job is to kill you and to harm you. But my job and God's job and the Holy Spirit's job is here to see you be set free. In Mark chapter 5, here's a man. He's a lunatic, he's a liar, he's crazy, he's wild, no clothes. He's not on any medication. This guy is just totally nuts. He's off his rocker. He's insane. He's unreasonable. He has flown over the chicken coop. And he would be in an institution if he was alive today. He's the type of guy that you take the food to and you slide it under the door and run. He's the Hannibal Lecter of the day. And Jesus stepped from the boat. And that maniac was running at him full speed. Jesus didn't turn to his disciples and say, Run! Get in the boat! Hurry! The Bible says he stood there. The man got down on his knees. Every sickness, disease, demon, and devil in hell, they have to bow their knee to Jesus. Jesus is Lord over craziness. Jesus is Lord over mental insanity. Jesus is Lord over alcoholism. Jesus is Lord over drug problems. Jesus is Lord over all the issues of life. There's nothing he can't handle. There's nothing that's too big for him. He doesn't throw up his hands and say, I don't know what I'm going to do about this one. That's not the kind of God we serve. He'll give you the strength and the power and the Holy Spirit residing in you that it's going to rise up inside of you and your enemies are going to be scattered. Scattered. Your enemies are going to be scattered. It's gone. Does anybody have any enemies that need to be scattered? Let that Holy Spirit come up and rise up inside of you. He'll give you the strength to overthrow the devil. The devil's job is to kill you. The devil's job is to harm you. The Bible says he stood there and the man got down on his knees and worshipped him. And when Jesus steps in, everything that is not of Christ steps out. You see, because Jesus is the great physician. He's the great I am. He's the burden bearer. He's the yoke destroyer. He doesn't teach you how to cope with your yoke. He destroys the yoke. In Isaiah 10, 27, the Bible says, in that day, the Lord will end the bondage of His people. And He'll break the yoke of slavery and lift it from their shoulders. Matthew 9, 27 through 30, after Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men followed along beside Him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me. They went right into the house where He was staying, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe I can make you see? Oh, yes, Lord. They told Him, We do. And He touched their eyes, and said, because of your faith, it will happen. And then their eyes were opened. Amen. And they could see. <laughs> they haven't been able to see in years. They began to see. And they saw Jesus for the very first time with their physical eyes. Folks, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, you need your eyes open to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when you get that Holy Spirit up inside of you, there's nothing that can stop you. There's nothing the devil can throw at you. There's nothing that's going to stick that he throws at you. You're going to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and God is going to use you greatly in these last days. I'm ready for the church to be used greatly. There are always those skeptics. Oh, that's typical human beings. They always want physical things. But if you're really spiritual and you care about spiritual things... They're the very first to criticize. That's how people talk who have no power. That's how people who don't have the Holy Spirit talk because they've made a choice not to carry the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. So they just give up. They already surrendered. There's no fight left in them. And they say, shame on you because you desire things from God. 
I do desire things from God. I desire everything I can get from God and more. And if you don't want yours, I'll take your portion. Just tell me if you don't want it, I'll come and get it. What did Jesus say to the cripple man? Did Jesus give him a nice little speech, a, a TED talk? Did he give him, a, a, the cripple man, uh, did he say, I know you'll never walk in, it, in Israel again, but one day you're going to walk on streets of gold? No, he didn't say that. Jesus is a miracle man. He said to the crippled man, rise up and walk and take your bed with you. Maybe I need to speak to you today and reintroduce you to the King of kings and the Lord of lords this morning. Because if you're not excited, if you're not turned on, if you're not turned up, if you're not desiring more of the Holy Ghost in your life, then maybe I'm not doing my job. But you see, my job is to fire you up and to see you do something great for the Lord. My job is to put an anointing on you, lay hands on you, you receive an anointing, and you go out and be a difference maker in our world. Don't come up, Joel. I'm not through yet. I'm just getting started, Joel. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting wound up. I'm just getting ready. I'm ready for the power of God to fall on this house. I'm ready for you to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit where you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and He comes on you. That's what I'm waiting for. So you just sit there. Don't steal my time, Joel. Our Lord is a miracle working God. Do you know how he was introduced to John the Baptist? John the Baptist's disciples came up to Jesus and said, Are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? Do we need to look for somebody else? He said, You know, it's just a yes or no question, really, it is. How many of you have ever asked somebody a question and it, it's just a yes or no and they give you the long dissertation? My wife is world famous for that. <laughs> Honey, you don't understand. I just need the short version. <laughs> Man, you know what I'm talking about. And the rest of you, you're cowards. I just love the short version. It's just a yes or no question that they asked Jesus. Jesus didn't answer the question with a yes or no. He said, go back to your master. Tell him the things that you've seen. Tell him about the blind seeing. Tell him about the deaf hearing. Tell him about the cripple walking. And tell him how the poor is having the gospel preached to them. You know, Mohammed taught things, Buddha taught things, but Jesus not only taught, he, what separated him was he was able to release the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and see people set free. Jesus never changed. He'll never change. In the Old Testament, the Bible says in Exodus, I am the Lord God and I, what? Change not. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is what? The same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, there were great evangelists for years that would go and hang big banners behind them. Men like A.A. A. Allen, men like T.L. Osborne, men like Oral Roberts, and these banners up behind them would be saying that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. According to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, God will do that now, in the power of the Holy Spirit, for anybody who has the faith to ask. That's why you're here. You see, I'm not here to give you a good TED Talk. I'm not here to give you a good lecture. I'm not here to just give you a speech. I'm here to give you something that's inside of me. He is the Holy Spirit, and I want you to receive it today. Amen. This is the word for whatever has gone wrong in your life. This word about the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever the devil has tried to saddle you with for years, is what can free you. You are one prayer away for the power of God pulling you up out of the pit and setting your feet on a solid rock. Just one prayer away. Are you ready? If you want to receive that, I want you to give the Lord the greatest big hand clap He's ever been had. Give Him a big hand. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Jesus set this man free that had a demon problem. You see, he was put in chains and he was put in shackles. He would snap them. He would smash them. He was one strong individual and nobody could subdue him. 
I want you to understand you're no match for the devil and demons in hell without the Holy Spirit. Only the anointing can free you. Only the anointing can help a man get free. These stories in the Bible, they are not fake. It's not a fairy tale. It's not just a a, a story in here, folks. This is real. And it has the power to change your life. Just like it did this demon-possessed man in the cave. There is supremacy and there is dominion and there is power and there is authority that comes when you allow God to fill you with the Spirit. What spirit are you talking about, Pastor? What are, you, what are you talking about? What spirit? The spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Jesus, when they crucified him, they put him in the tomb. They wrapped his body like gauze. And they wrapped his body. It was called a shroud. And they found this shroud, and they think they found this shroud that was left behind after Jesus rose from the dead. And there's the bloodstains on it. And they believe this is it. And there is an imprint of the body of Jesus on the shroud of Turin. What happens is, what happens is, that when he was placed in the tomb and three days later he rose again, it was like a gigantic x-ray went off in the room. And there was an imprint left. I've got news for you today. I've got news for you. The same power that raised Jesus from the grave in that tomb lives inside of you if you were born again. Believer and know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you've got that. And if you've never asked for it and you've never received it, this is your day. This is your day to receive the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that Jesus had to raise him from the dead. The Bible says he can live in you. He can dwell in you. He can quicken you. The Bible says when you carry the Holy Ghost, you carry power that is greater than the power that's behind all the demon forces in hell. I'm here to set people free. So they can be healed, whole, well. I'm not here to lay hands on one person and get some sanitizer and clean my hands. I'm not here to grab another person and get some sanitizer and clean my hands. I'm here to lay hands on people so they can be set free, delivered from sickness, from evil, from the devil, and everything the devil wants to do in their lives. When the leper came to Jesus, did Jesus say, Oh, hold on, i got to get my hand sanitizer. Hold on, I need to mask up. Hang on, i got a social distance. Hang on! Don't you read, you don't read that in any translation. The anointing is the manifested power of the Holy Spirit. Without that in your Christian life, you're just a person that goes to church on Sunday morning. Without the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you're just a person that goes to church on a Sunday morning. A lot of people go to church, they sing a little song, they pray a little, they throw some change in the offering, they come back next week. And those people are easy prey to the devil, because without the power of God and the Holy Spirit working in you, the devil's going to run all over you like a Mack truck. But when you get the anointing of the Holy Ghost and fire, whatever the devil throws at you will be of no effect. Why is that? Because the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in the believer. My good friend Terry Young is over here. I knew Terry back at House, New Mexico, when I was preaching in a little Baptist church over there. Terry, I think you can probably vouch, I was a pretty good preacher back then. For those times that you wasn't running around the church and messing around and playing. I was pretty good then. But Terry, I don't know if you notice a difference in me since you've come and heard me now that we've both grown up. Some of us grow up more than others. But would you say, Terry, that there is a major difference in me in my preaching? Would you would say that? Do you know why that is? Maturity, learning about the things of God, learning about the Holy Spirit, what He can do for you, learning about 
how the Holy Spirit wants to come and reside in me, how he wants to take over in my life. And this Holy Spirit has just fell on me. You see, I preached many years without the Holy Spirit. I preached many years without the power of the God. I preached many, many years without. And to be honest with you, it was just, just religion. But when I met a lady 32 years ago, she told me, Farrell, there's so much more. I said, what do you mean there's more? I don't understand. I don't understand. Don't understand. We go to church. We pray. We sing. We leave. We come back. There's so much more. And tears would just flood her face. And I went to church, spirit-filled church. I saw what was happening. Matter of fact, it was a church just a lot like this church. Matter of fact, it was this church. And I saw people raising their hands. And I saw them receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I remember, I, I remember, I remember really well. I remember really, really well. I would sit on my hands, say, I'm not doing it. Not going to make me. You're not going to mess with me. And you know what? I sat there for a few weeks and nothing happened. We got people going into church, sit there for weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years, and nothing happened. Not going to make me preacher. Ain't going to happen. You ain't near big enough and bad enough, preacher. But about that second, third month, after sitting on my hands, there was something that came on side of me. I've never been able to get over. It was the Holy Spirit. And I began to release myself, and I began just to release. I just began to say, okay, I give up. My wife's after me. This church, they're after me. These people, they're after me. Holy Spirit, what really matters is you've been after me for years. And I said, and I just surrendered. I wasn't sitting on my hands any longer. I just surrendered. And I said, whatever, Lord. If it's true, if it's real, I want it. And the Lord said, Farrell, if you'll receive me, if you'll take all of me, not just my salvation part, not just going to heaven part, but if you'll take all of me, I'll change your life. And I've been on a ride of a lifetime for over 30 years with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to come into your life today. The Holy Spirit wants to move in you today. The Holy Spirit wants you to come and surrender. Would you do that today? Would you just surrender? Would you surrender to the Holy Spirit? This morning, I'd like for you to bow your heads and close your eyes because I really want to pray for you. You know, the truth of the matter is I'm tired of the devil whipping some of you day after day, year after year. I'm tired of the devil winning. I'm tired of the devil having a victory over you. I'm tired of the enemy beating you over the head week after week and month after month. I'm ready for things to change. I've had enough. Lord Jesus, today, right now, we surrender. Right now, we surrender. If you would be kind enough, 
if that is you that says, Pastor, I want to surrender to the Holy Spirit. In just a second or two, we're going to stand to our feet. I want you to be the first one here. I don't want you to wait on the second guy or the third gal. I don't want you to wait on anybody. I want you to be the first one. If you'd say, Pastor, I want to surrender right now. And if you do that, your greatest days are just ahead. So, Lord, I pray right now for the power of the Holy Spirit to fall on this house. Fall on the believers. Fall on those who have been saved, born again. They know you, Lord and Savior. Fall on them. Empower them. Quicken them. Waken them up to their greatest days that are just ahead. So, Lord, right now, I ask that you move. If the Holy Spirit is moving, He's tugging at you right now. He's tugging at your heart. Just like a little child grabbing your clothes. He's tugging at you. That's the Holy Spirit trying to speak to you. How many of you want the Holy Spirit? How many of you need the Holy Spirit? If that's you, we're all going to stand on the count of three. And I want you to be the very first one out. Ready? One, two, three. We're all standing. Come quickly, quickly, quickly. I want to pray for you that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you to clap for the ones that are coming right now. Give them a big God bless you. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come here, B. I want to see you. Come here, B. Come on over here. I want the Holy Spirit to come on you. I want the power of the Holy Spirit to come on you. Do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? You've been born again. And now you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you what, it's going to change your life. It's going to rock your world. You're going to be a powerful, mighty warrior. Your greatest days are ahead. They're not what's behind you. Your greatest days are going to happen right now. How many else will join this, these two? Would you come? Would you come quickly? Please do not hesitate. Please do not wait. <clears throat> Please come quickly. Don't wait. I need some ladies to gather around B. I need some men to gather around Carrie. We want the baptism of the Holy Spirit to fall. and We want the Holy Spirit to come. Ms. Robles, how old are you? 85 years old, you can never have enough of God, can you? You ready for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready for more? I, I'm ready for you to get more. I'm ready for you to get more in the name of Jesus. Are you coming too for this evening? She's been filled, but she says she wants some more. I want you to just step out this way just a little bit. I just want you to step out just a little bit. Tommy, have you ever had the baptism of the Holy Spirit? No. No? All right. You're saved? You know Jesus? You ready for more? Are you ready for more? I'm ready for you to get more too. I'm ready for you to get more too. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for everything. I'm ready for everything. Are you ready? What we're going to do is nothing hokey pokey, nothing weird, nothing strange. It's just the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It came on a room in a house. 120 people were in this house and the Bible said that the Holy Spirit fell on all 120. It wasn't just for a select few, but the whole house was filled. The whole house was filled. I thank you that you are here today. You're ready to be filled. You're ready for all that emptiness to be filled. You're saved. You know Jesus. We're ready to move on to another level. We're, we're ready to move up higher. Anybody else want to come and join these folks? Don't you dare wait. You're fixing to miss out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my good friend B. Lord, I want now the Holy Spirit to come upon her. I want the Holy Spirit to set down on her like in the days of Acts. In the days of Acts where 120 people just received. She is here to receive now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for her today that this is going to be her day. Her day. Special day. And she receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's about to fall on you right now. I 
promise you, it's about to come. I want you ready. I want you ready. God wants you ready. He's got news for you. He's got something for you. We're going to stay here in just a minute. Just put out your hands, just like this. Be. Just slip out your hands and start to receive. I want you to continue to receive. Be in that attitude just for a minute or two. Lord, I pray for Carrie today. I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come on him, and he will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Right now, the Holy Spirit's about to fall. I pray for my good friend, Ms. Robles, today. I pray, Father, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit in her life. 85 years young. I didn't say 85 years old. She's saying, I want more. Pastor, I want more. God, I pray right now that you'll come on her like a flood. Lord Jesus, I pray for Christine. I want her to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you to flow over her, fill her, empower her, quicken her. She's never going to be the same after this day. She's been filled before. She wants another filling. She wants another dose. She wants more of the Holy Ghost. She wants more power. She wants more anointing. Let her have it in the name of Jesus. And Father, right now for Tommy. Lord, I see a great, great young man here. A great man, a great fighter of the faith. And I want him to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's been saved. He knows you as Lord and Savior. He's been born again. But he's saying, Pastor, I want what you got. And I want to give it to him. I want you to take your hands, and I just want you to slip them out real quick for me. All of you right here, okay? Just, just slip out your hands. We're going to receive. This is how you receive. If I'm going to give you a million dollars, hold out your hands. Get ready for it because I got something better than a million dollars. I got something better. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want you right now to do one thing. I want you to just wrap your mind, close yourself off, you and the Holy Spirit in a room all by yourself. And this Holy Spirit is going to come upon you like never before. You don't know how, you don't know what, you don't know why, but it's going to happen right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Have you ever had a Dr. Pepper and you shake up that bottle and you got your thumb over it? What happens? It explodes. I'm going to say that the anointing is going to explode inside of you. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to bubble up, bubble out, and it's going to explode. You're in your room. You're locked up with Him. He's about to move in your life. He's about to come on you. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Let me tell you how to do it. I want you right now to open your mouth. And I want you just to open your mouth. And I want you to begin to release what's inside of you. Those words that you've never heard those words you've never uttered before and I want you to begin to speak. The Bible says He comes with tongues and He comes upon you with tongues. And I want you to open your mouth. I want you to let the thumb go off. I want you to let the cork blow off. I want the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you with cloven tongues just like it was done over 2,000 years ago. Holy Spirit, fall right now on me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I release her tongue. I release her from the bondage. I release her now in Jesus' name. Now I want you to begin to speak, V. I want you to speak. I don't want you to speak in English. I want something that's coming up outside of you right now as you just open your mouth. If you open your mouth, he'll fill you. All you got to do is open your mouth. Do it now in Jesus' mighty name. Open your mouth and begin to speak. Don't know what you're going to speak, but he's going to speak through you. Go ahead. Mighty God, mighty God. Okay, I want you to stand where Lindy's at. Lindy, come up here. And turn around up here. Lord Jesus, I pray right now. I want to pray for you. Take that anointing. Take that anointing of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want you to come on an 85 year old lady. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for the power of God. I'm ready for the Holy Spirit to fall on Ms. Robles today. I want you to come in power. I want you to release your goodness to her. I want you to release her today. Release her today in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. 
Just take this heal. Just receive it. Just receive it. I want you to open your mouth and I want you to speak. I don't want you to speak in English. I don't want you to speak in Spanish. I want something to come up out of here from God. I want you to open your mouth, open your tongue, and be loud. I receive. Never again, never again. We are going to be free. We're going to have a baptism of the Holy Spirit. We want you to fall. We want you to move. We want you to come on Ms. Robles today. Lord, I pray for a supernatural anointing. A supernatural of anointing of the Holy Spirit. Come. Come right now on Christine. Father, I pray that she opens her mouth. Not English, not Spanish. Just the Spirit of God comes up out of her. Speaking today, Father. Lord, today, I pray for Tommy. He's been saved. He knows you as his Lord and Savior. He realizes there is more. There's more. There's more anointing. There's more power. There's an infilling of the Holy Spirit. He's walked without it for too long. He's got salvation. He's going to heaven. But he needs power. And so, Father, today, I release the power of the Holy Spirit on him. I release his tongue. I release this man to the joy and the power of the Lord. And may he never be the same in the name of Jesus. Tommy, I want you to open your mouth. I want you to begin to speak. Let it come from here in the belly. Let it come in from here and let it come up. Let it come out. Let it erupt. And just allow the Holy Spirit to move. So open your mouth and just move your tongue. Not Spanish, not English, but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. It's not man. It's the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth, just open your mouth, and move your tongue. God, I pray for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit on top. Never the same. We're just in His presence. We're just locked up in that room. Just me just and you, Lord. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, follow. Follow my good friend today. Follow my good friend today. May He never be the same. Never the same. You know, whenever I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, I don't want to be a fake. I don't want to be a fraud. I don't want to be a phony. But what I want is you. I want more of you. And he began to release the tongues in my life. And I've never been the same since. Cloven tongues, cloven tongues. You see, it just happened. Some people say it's just for the 12. It's just for the 12 apostles. No, it isn't. It was for the 120 room in the room. No, it isn't. It was more than that. It's more than that. It's more than that. Release that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Release that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just like that cold bottle. Just release that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let it come up out of here. Let it come up out of here. Let it come up out of here. Let it come out. Let it come out. Speak it out. Be bold. Be loud. Be bold. Be courageous. be seated. We'll just finish up here. Just be seated. Anything you want? You receive that? You receive that? Amen. 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 Amen.
Receive that, receive that anointing, receive that anointing in Jesus' name. Receive that anointing. Hallelujah. 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 I want everything the Holy Spirit has for me. I want everything the Holy Spirit has for me. I know you do. I know you do, church. I know you want all of the Holy Spirit that He has for you. I not only know that you want it, I know you need it. I know you need it. Your greatest days are ahead. What the Holy Spirit is going to do in you is absolutely going to revolutionize your life. Did you get it? Tommy is one of the most sincere, honest, kind people I know. And if it can happen with you, Tommy, can it happen with anybody here? It can happen with you, can it? And it can happen with them. Ms. Robles, did you receive it today? Did you receive that? That's great. I don't know where Christine went. I think Terry's been getting something. B, did you receive it today? B, did you get something from the Lord today? Did the Holy Spirit speak to you and through you? Amen, amen. B hasn't been coming to our church but a couple of weeks. Would you give her a big round of applause? Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Holy Spirit's all over you, isn't he? Amen. You know why he's over you? He's, he's on top of you. He's on top of you. Because he's ready to rest on you. He's ready to camp out on you. He's ready to take over every area of your life. He's got it. He's got it. I know he does. I know he does. You love God, don't you, Carrie? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. 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 Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I knew today was going to be an exceptional day. Not just an average day. Not just a run-of-the-mill day. I knew it was going to be an exceptional day day because the Holy Spirit told me that next week he's going to blow your doors off those of you that didn't come you'll be here next week and you'll come up here and you're going to see the power of God next week I want you to be ready I want you to be ready team you did a great job releasing the anointing thank you very much Thank you very much. We're going to take our offerings right now, so I'll ask our 